Hello, and welcome to Budget Commander. On this channel, we'll discuss Magic the Gathering topics with a focus on playing Commander on a budget. We'll cover things like deck building, top cards, deck techs, and more. Let's get started. Hello friends, today we have a Savine the Chronoclasm deck tech for you. This is a budget to deck tech, specifically 2DH, meaning all the cards in the deck are $2 or under, with the exception of the commander, who can be up to $5. All cards were price checked as of the day of recording using the website mtgstocks.com. Keep note or keep in mind that prices do fluctuate, so depending on when you're seeing this, prices could be greater or less than what they're showing here. Savine the Chronoclasm is a 5 to cast 2 2 human wizard. He has the text of prevent all damage that would be dealt to Savine the Chronoclasm. So he makes for a great blocker, just sits in front of stuff and doesn't die. And then he also reads whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard each turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So you can get a ton of extra triggers off of him if you can get him to stick to the battlefield. Goal of this deck is to play creatures that get a bunch of extra triggers off of instants and sorceries, and then hopefully just outvalue our opponents, attrition them to death by getting tons of extra copies off of your instants and sorceries that you're casting from your graveyard. As with all EDH decks, we're going to start out by talking uh, ways to accelerate our game plan, how to ramp up so that we can get to those bigger spells that have a greater impact on the game. We're also going to talk about how we're going to interfere with our opponent's plans. They're all going to be trying to execute their own game plan, so how are we going to mess with them? What are the cards that are going to provide us consistency so that we can continue to press our game plan? And then lastly, the lands that are going to either help us to cast those spells or sometimes also help us to press our own game plan. So getting into accelerants. We have the Talisman of Conviction, as well as the Talisman of Creativity, which we can tap for colorless, but they can also help us fix our colors at the cost of one life. Azorius Locket gives us white and blue, but we can also sacrifice it late game and draw some extra cards off of it. Is it Locket is the same as the Azorius Locket, except that it gives us blue-red. Once again, sacrifice it, draw some extra cards. The Curious Humungu Humunculus is a mana dork, so we can tap it to add colorless, but only if we're using that mana to cast instants and sorceries. If at the beginning of our upkeep we have three or more instants and sorceries in our graveyard, we get to transform the Humunculus into a Voracious Reader, which is a 3-4 with prowess, so it gets bigger when you cast instants or sorceries until end of turn. But more importantly, he is a cost reducer, making all of our instants and sorceries one less to cast. Furthermore, we have our Millery Sphere, which doesn't truly accelerate us, but helps us to smooth out our land drops. Burnished Heart, which helps us get extra lands to the battlefield uh, early. And then Goblin Electromancer, which just like the Voracious Reader, helps to reduce the cost of all of our instants and sorceries. Last accelerant is Jace's Sanctum. It's a four to cast enchantment that once again reduces the cost of all of our instants and sorceries. It also helps to smooth out our draws because anytime we cast an instant or sorcery, we get a scry one. Starting to get into our game plan, we have a bunch of creatures right here that want or get triggers off of instants and sorceries being cast. Young Pyromancer and Tower and Sky Summoner give us creatures. Tower Ends creatures are nothing to bat your eyes at. They're 2 2 flyers, so they're hard to block, and then they deal a lot more damage than. 1-1 one, one grounded creatures. Gutter Snipe is great. This card deals tons of damage if it gets to stay out for a long time, especially since we are mostly casting instants and sorceries in our deck. Increasing Devotion and Storm Herd all help us to get more token creatures. Increasing Devotion has flashback. If we're casting it from our graveyard, we're going to get 10 creatures off of it. If Savine is out and we're flashing it back, we're going to get 20 creatures off of it. So a lot of value to be had there. The Enigma Drake is a flyer with X, X power and 4 toughness, and its power is equal to the instants and sorceries in our graveyard. So the longer the game goes, the bigger this thing gets, and it comes with built-in evasion. So you're going to be able to deal 
quite a bit of damage on your opponents if they don't have any way to block it. The Bloodthirsty Blade is great. We can equip it to our opponent's most threatening creature and they're forced to attack someone other than us with it. Mass Diminish allows us to force our opponents into bad blocks. We got a bunch of token creatures out. We can reduce their entire board to a bunch of 1-1s and then per we will potentially be wiping them out if they can't block enough of our creatures if we have our flyers with tower in or forcing them to trade if they have to block to survive it also comes with flashback and dramatic reversal which is just a solid card in a lot of blue decks because it has a lot of utility you'll just have to see what the best way is to use it in the game that you're playing because it's a very situational card lastly for our game plan uh, we have the cackling counterpart this is a token or a clone maker of any of our own creatures. It also has flashbacks, so we potentially could get an extra token off of Savine if this is out. Having an extra Gutter Snipe or Pyromancer or Enigma Drake is great. We don't have a ton of cards actually devoted to our game plan because a lot of them are cards that provide consistency for us, giving us those extra triggers. But before we get to those cards that provide consistency, we're going to talk about how we're going to interfere with our opponent's plan. We have Swords of Plowshare, which just gets rid of any creature. Winds of Abandon can deal with any one creature, or if we needed to, it can deal with all of our opponent's creatures. And then Pyroclasm, which helps get rid of any of the creatures with toughness two or less from our opponent's board, our own board as well. But Savine, however, is immune to these effects because he's has all damage prevented to him. Pariah is a great political card. You can equip this to a, a problematic creature and opponent controls, make a deal with another opponent. Hey, you attack me, and I'll put this Pariah over here on this creature we need to get rid of. I won't block that creature, and we'll redirect all the damage to this enchanted thing. You can also put it on Savine and make it so you can't be dealt damage until Savine is removed or this enchantment. Burning Vengeance is great. Whenever you cast cards from your graveyard, you get to just deal two damage to stuff, so it can help you kill off utility creatures, get rid of blockers that are in your way, it can help you deal that extra damage that you need after combat. So Burning Vengeance, great card, just sits on the table and you get a lot of value off of it. Beacon Bolt helps you get rid of creatures. The later in the game this goes, the more uh, damage you're going to be able to deal with it because you have cards more cards in exile as well as your graveyard. Magma Quake, another card that Savine is immune to, but it helps wipe the board of all the grounded creatures. Raul Zarek, multi-use interference card, can deal three damage to any target. You can tap car other cards down and untap your own stuff, and potentially you could take extra turns off of him as well. Counterspell is just gonna help you deal with any problematic <laughs> spells that are on the stack. We also have Is It Charm and Ionize, which can counter things. Is It Charm also allows us to get rid of small creatures, or we can use it to draw a couple cards and discard cards. We don't mind doing that so much because a lot of the cards we're discarding have flashbacks, so it's really, we're not losing them from our hand, we just have an alternate cost to cast them instead. Generous Gift helps us deal with any permanents that are on the battlefield. We do give our opponent a green elephant, but we're probably going to be getting rid of we need to be getting rid of something way more threatening if we're using this silence shuts all of our opponents off for a turn dusk wipes the board of all the creatures with power three or greater we can also cast it aftermath style so from our graveyard and return all the creatures with power two or less from our graveyard to our hand which is most of our creatures fervent denial is a counter spell that costs five so it's pretty expensive but it does have flashback which is nice it's one of those ones you can just throw to your graveyard and then at some point later in the game you have extra mana sitting around and you can flash it back to counter one of your opponent's spells. It catches people off guard a lot of the time. More consistency through card draw. We have Brainstorm Important which help us fix our draws. Curiosity, we can put on a creature that we're going to be able to get in for damage with. Hopefully it's uh, getting us at least one card on the turn we play it. but. Maybe we get a second draw off of it if we get through a cycle and nobody put anything out or one of our opponents at least has nothing that can block the equipped creature. 
anticipate and scour all possibilities all help us fix our draws and draw us more cards scour all possibilities has flashback which for five so later in the game when we don't have anything else going on scry a couple draw a card think twice draws us a card it also has flashback then we have cathartic reunion reunion desperate ravings and tormenting voice these are cards that we discard cards from our own hand to draw cards so seems not great but since most of the cards in our deck have flashback it actually helps us to gain more cards in our hand because our graveyard essentially works as our hand in this deck Firemind's Research is an enchantment that comes down for two. Anytime we cast an instant or sorcery, we get charge counters on it, and then we can remove two charge counters to draw a card. If we ever get five charge counters on it, we can remove five counters to deal five damage to a target, but we're mostly going to use that to draw cards. Frantic Search is great in this deck. Pay three, draw two cards, and then discard two cards. So discarding things we want to throw to the bin anyway, and then we get to untap three lands. So we can actually ramp a little bit off of this if we have our bounce lands out. These are lands that tap for two mana. So there's three of them in the deck. So in the right situation, if we tapped all three of those, we could add six mana, then cast this for three, and then re-untap those lands, and we have three floating mana, and we got to draw a couple new cards and throw a couple cards to the bin. So great card there. Una's Grace helps us with our draws, also turns all of our lands into a draw spell. So we don't have dead cards in our hand. Secrets of the Dead, speaking of dead, is a card that gives us a draw whenever we cast a card from our graveyard. Deep Analysis draws us cards and has flashback. And then here's Ignite the Future, which doesn't truly draw us cards. This is actually probably one of the cards you want to throw in the bin if you get to that point. It says, exile the top three cards of your library until the end of turn, end of the, your next turn, you may play those cards. If the spell was cast from your graveyard, you may play cards this way without paying their mana costs. So you're probably gonna wanna flash this back. I don't even know if I want to cast it from my hand because after I've cast it for, let's say I cast it on turn four when I have four mana, we make a whole turn cycle. I potentially may not even be able to cast any of those cards if they're all above five mana. And then also, I may not need to or want to cast those cards because of the situation that I'm stuck in in that present moment. So probably throw this one in the bin if you can help it, but you can also use it uh, for its regular cost if you like. Crackling Drake is just like the Enigma Drake, except for when it enters we get to draw a card, and its power and toughness is not only equal to the cards in our graveyard, but also the instance and sorcery, sorry, instance and sorceries in a graveyard, but also the instance and sorceries that we have in exile. So this is gonna be even bigger than the Enigma Drake. It also draws us a card. So better all around card, but Enigma Drake is solid too. River Kelpie is gonna help us draw cards. Anytime we cast a spell, anytime anyone casts a spell from a graveyard, we're gonna be able to draw a card off of it. So permanence entering the grave, grave battlefield from the graveyard so if we're playing a black opponent who returns creatures from the graveyard to the battlefield most likely then we get to draw cards so he's just going to draw us a ton of cards uh the longer he stays out and he's going to stay out for a while because he's hard to remove because he has persist which means when he dies he's going to come back again with a minus one minus one counter then you've got niv mizzet perun who's tough to cast in that he's three blue and three red he's a five five flyer though can't be countered Anytime you draw a card, and as you've seen, we draw a lot of cards with this deck, we get to deal one damage to a target, and then anytime we cast an instant or sorcery, we're going to draw another card. So he's going to be pinging our opponents, getting rid of utility creatures, dealing with planeswalkers, solid card for this deck. Recoup, as well as Mystic Retrieval, help us get cards, recast cards from our graveyard, and then Runic Repetition helps us to get cards back from exile so cards that have been exiled maybe we've used mystic retrieval twice once from hand once from our graveyard it's now exiled we cast runic repetition targeting the mystic retrieval it gets returned to our hand and then we can use mystic retrieval again so tons of value to be had there and get off of cards from flashback you could potentially cast a card with flashback four times using runic repetition possibly more 
Backdraft Hellkite gives all the cards in our graveyard instants and sorceries flashback. And their flashback cost is just equal to their regular mana cost. So you can recast those cards that don't have flashback. Great value card there. Narset's Reversal and Increasing Vengeance help us to copy instants and sorceries so we can get extra triggers off of those. So more uh, repetition similar to Savine himself. And then last card that provides consistency is Expansion or Explosion. Expansion's gonna copy something for us. Explosion's gonna help us deal some damage and draw some cards. So either way, whatever stage of the game you're in or whatever situation you're in, this is a solid card for the deck. The lands that are going to help us get there, we have 10 islands, 7 mountains, 3 plains, Ash Barons, Evolving Wilds, Myriad Landscape all help us fetch. The Ash Barons in the pinch we can also use for a colorless mana, so if we really need that turn 5 Savine, we can play this for a colorless and put him out. We also have Terramorphic Expanse which can fetch us a land, Temple of the False God which ramps us, Ghost Quarter, which helps us deal with our opponent's lands. Mystic Monastery and Command Terror, which give us all three of our colors. Exotic Orchard, which could potentially give us all three of our colors, but is usually going to give us at least one or two of the colors, as long as we're at a four color pod. Azorius Chancery, Prairie Stream, and Tranquil Cove give us blue and white. Is it Boilerworks? Is it Gilgate? Shiv and Reef give us blue red. Battlefield Forge, Boros Garrison, Boros Guildgate give us red and white. Temple of Triumph and Windsguard Craig also give us red white. Here you can see our mana curve. A lot of two drops. This deck was really low to the ground. The average CMC was three. I did calculate any cards with X in their cost as a seven drop. So it doesn't give us an exact number. That's a rough number there. But very low to the ground deck. If you like the idea of casting a ton of instants and sorceries, getting extra triggers and copies of those spells, if this deck looks fun to you, give it a try. Let me know how it goes. Otherwise, let me know what deck or commander you'd like to see a deck tech on next. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. Peace. Thanks for watching. You can help support this channel by hitting that subscribe button. This will help keep you up to date on content from Budget Commander. If you liked the video, make sure you liked the video. Leave me a comment with your thoughts on this topic. And if you think someone else could benefit from this video, feel free to share. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk with you next time.